probably the most famous of all King Charles's mistresses, and the one of whom it's said that he never tired was Nell Gwynne, who worked here at the Theatre Royal Drury Lane. She certainly had all the attributes that appealed to the royal eye. She was pretty, witty, and the least greedy of all Charles's mistresses. A lot of her early life was spent in the London slum areas that once surrounded where I am now, modern day Covent Garden. Nell basically made a living selling oranges outside the theatre with her, 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 her favourite trick was to put the tray just under her bosoms uh, so that the orange sales would presumably be boosted as a result. She was spotted by uh, some of the actors who she then had affairs with uh, and Charles being a, a patron of the theatre then spotted her himself or maybe Chiffinch got her for him and uh, she became one of his favourites. She gravitated towards the stage and eventually became an actress. And it was there in Covent Garden that she caught the king's eye and he summoned her to his box. And uh, on one occasion, he actually took her out for a meal. Uh, the king, the king's brother, James, they were both in disguise, and her. And at the end of it, uh, they realized they didn't have any money, so she had to pay uh, for these kind of two royal diners. Nell Gwynne was just fun. You know, there were no airs and graces. She was just up for it. She enjoyed herself. There was just, there was no formality to this. And yeah, I mean, that was great. Why not? Such was Charles's infatuation with Nell that he's said to have used a secret tunnel to meet her, but not one leading to the wing of a royal palace. No, far from it. This one leads from the Theatre Royal over here, under the road, and into this pub, now appropriately called the Nell of Old Drury. Its manager, Stephen, agreed to show me around. Tracy, so if you'd just like to come through here to turn this on. I'm excited to see this. So, this is the Nell of Old Drury's best kept secret. Behind this door is where the tunnel is, where Charles II came. Wow, look at and that. And if you look, you can see this is all here, the original arch. And where would the tunnel have ended up? The tunnel would have been just on the other side of the theatre, just past the ballet room on this side. So Charles would have been in there watching a show of some mm -hmm. description, maybe gets a bit bored or it's during the interval, walks through the tunnel. Yes, comes through the tunnel and then meets his mistress, Nell Gwynn. Here? In the cellar? Or? No, I would imagine it would have been in one of the bedrooms upstairs. This isn't exactly the most romantic setting. Indeed. Yeah. So he's done the deed mm -hmm. and then goes back, presumably... Goes back over to watch the end of the performance. Job done. Job done, exactly. When the King was at Drury Lane at the theatre, he would go and meet Nell Gwynne. And she was waiting for him in what is a, a pub across the road. And there was actually a secret tunnel underneath that linked the two buildings. And he would traverse that and go up and find her and have sex with her and then come back before the end of the play so he could applaud and be seen there and nobody would know what was going on. I think Charles II's fascination for low-born women is something you see with a lot of monarchs because they've got that whole stifling environment in court. So Nell Gwynne, for him, it was a taste of real life and it was a bit of excitement and he could go and meet them out in the street. And the streets of London, you remember at that time, were pretty racy, filthy, degenerate, exactly the sort of thing a bored monarch was going to like. wasn't nearly as grasping as some of her rival mistresses. She did do quite well out of her relationship with the king. This is 79 Pall Mall, the site of her final London residence. It was originally a red brick townhouse. She moved here in 1671, and the freehold was conferred to her five years later. It was her main home for the rest of her short life. Nell died in 1687 at just 37 years of age, probably from the effects of syphilis. Not only had she won a special place in the heart of King Charles II, she had also carved out a niche in popular memory. Nell was really a favourite of Charles's for um, a large part of, of her life and his life, and Considering that she started from the bottom of the heap, she did phenomenally well 
socially, financially, by Charles. There was an element of companionship, but if it had just been a sexual kind of wham-bam, thank you, ma'am, if I can put it like that, then I don't think he would have bought her a beautiful townhouse in Pall Mall uh, or given her a generous pension um, in her final days. Yeah.